In this video, we're gonna be talking all about the Coubaton. We're gonna look at this one from Millspin, a veteran owned company here in the USA. And we're gonna be talking about whether or not this is a good self-defense option. Stick around. A lot of times I don't watch a lot of other videos around content that I'm getting ready to create. And the reason why is because I want to bring you a fresh perspective. But I did watch one video on this from a YouTube channel that I really love called Hard to Hurt. I love that YouTube channel and I just think it's a lot of no BS, straightforward, good stuff with regards to self-defense teaching. If you're not subscribed to Hard to Hurt, I would recommend that. It's just well balanced and he's a pretty funny guy. And I most definitely agree with his take on the Coubaton. But moving forward, for those who don't know, what is a Coubaton? Well, it's just a handheld solid striking object that allows you to put a lot of force in one spot. It could be something like this, or it could be just some other sort of solid handheld object. It doesn't even have to have a sharp point. It just has to have a concentrated area. It would go in the same category as something like maybe a tactical pen. The one thing about the tactical pen though is that it does have more than one purpose. You can write with it. And some tactical pens even have a flashlight included. But I really like this aluminum Coubertin with the finger grooves and this point, and I'll drop a link in the description for you to go out to Mill Spin and check this out. This is a tool, just like so many other things. It gives you the ability to strike and it's going to hurt. But you know, this doesn't cover all elements of the fight. You have to understand a tool's limitations and Having something like this on your keychain and your pockets not going to make up for a lack of skill in other areas. The question gets brought up all the time. Does this weapon work? Does that weapon work? Does this martial art work? Nothing in and of itself works. We have to make it work by using certain things at the right time. If it means being able to take something like this and strike somebody in the face or even in the eye in a bad enough situation to where I'm able to get clear of the situation, yes, the Coubertin worked in that particular arena. But what if I'm trapped on the ground and I'm hitting somebody with this and adrenaline's flowing and it's not kicking in yet? I've got to be able to utilize other skills. Watch out for people who yell, don't ever go to the ground in a street fight. Well, I agree with that. You shouldn't if you can avoid it, but you have to understand that if you get entangled with someone for a given amount of time, it's very likely that you will. Of course, we don't wanna to go to the ground in a street fight if we don't have to, no more than we want to get in some kind of knife duel with someone, but sometimes things just happen. We've got to study all elements of the fight without saying crazy things like, well, I've got my Coubaton, I'm good to go. You obviously can use something like this to strike with a concentrated force and there may be times where you may be able to use it like a pressure point type of system where you're applying pressure against someone to create some space to get free. Uh, but nobody's just going to stand there and let you use this as a pressure point object. It's got to be used very carefully amidst the struggle and all the ugliness that comes with the unpredictable nature of a real fight. Of course, something like this is going to be effective if you have the ability to get the drop on somebody in striking with this. In order for just about any tool that we're working with to be effective, there's got to be an element of surprise. If I'm in a conflict and homeboy here can see the Coubertin in my hand, he's already watching what's going on. It's gonna be a lot harder to make something like this work. Pepper spray is the same way. Pepper spray needs to be very concealed until it's time to use it. Uh, the element of surprise is so important in the real world, but if you are able to score, the element of surprise and strike effectively with something like this, you may likely have the opportunity to get back out of that situation. If the fight continues and it, you guys lock up, this begins to become less and less of a factor, especially if you do go to the ground and they're able to trap your hand. You've got to have other faculties at work. But yes, if you're able to get an effective shot in, it's gonna hurt. You've also got some people out there that just don't want a knife as a self-defense option. They don't want to stab. They don't want to do anything like that. So something like this is good for a person like that because they'll live unless you just continue to bludgeon them 
with this. If you strike them a couple of times and get out of there, they'll live. Just remember something, my friend, you got two hands. I think a lot of times when people get their weapon in their hand, they just wanna go to work with that weapon. And a lot of people in a real situation will just continue to try to strike with that hand versus setting up opportunities to strike. Flat hands to the face, then a strike, a lot of people just, I got my weapon, I'm going after him with that weapon hand. Just remember that you have two hands. And don't forget, you can still punch even with this in hand. You come here and set up those strikes for that big shot. So is a coup baton an effective self-defense tool? Sometimes it is, yes, and sometimes maybe not so much. But it's better than having an empty hand when you need equalization because it may just be the strike force that you need to get out of Dodge. That's my thoughts on the coupon. I'd love to hear yours. Take care.